Hello gamers, I'm Bertu Barry and welcome back to another episode of Conan Exiles and today, today we will be doing something special, uh, something I haven't done before yet. We will be doing a mod spotlight and this first mod spotlight will be all about the Pippi mod. So if you wonder what the Pippi mod is, let me guide you through all that. There's a lot to cover so I might be splitting this up in different episodes but we will see how far we can get today. Okay, what is the Pippi mod? Well, the Pippi mod is a mod for Conan Exiles created by Just Tech, also known as Cookie Monster on the Steam uh, thingies. And you will, of course, find the mod in the Steam workshop for Conan Exiles. And I will be providing with a link to the actual mod in the description of, the, of this video as well. And the Pippi mod adds a lot of new features to the game. And I have the impression that it's something like, uh, yeah, a mod consisting of different modules. And these modules uh, can be combined together to uh, work together as well. So, for example, there's a, a home module that enhances the chat system, there is a module that enhances the map system, there is a warp system module, there is a, a, a kit system module, and all those things seem to be working together quite nicely. For example, if you add a warp point to the game, you will be able to uh, make it display on the map, and that's how the, all of everything works together. So yeah, there is a lot to cover, so uh, let's have a closer look at a few of those things. Okay, in order to be able to configure the mod, you will need, of course, uh, admin access on your server. And uh, yeah, once you have that, you will notice that the Pippi mod will replace the admin panel you normally have in Conan Exiles. And when you click on it, you will see the whole Pippi uh, mod appear with its different, uh, yeah, some of the modules in the system. Like, for example, there is something where you can handle players. There is something which for, uh, for clans, temporary bans, the warp system, there is a whole command system, the event system, which I think is still in development. There is a whole kit system, there is the whole Pippi setting thing, and there is the traditional uh, admin cheat thingy in the game as well. So let's start with, with a few basic things. First of all, let's have a look at the chat system. Okay, with the chat system comes, of course, the different channels. So you have the global channel, the local channel, the clan channel, and the whispers channel. The whispers is also something new added to Pippi. And for example, if you want to start typing, you press the tab key, it will switch you to the different uh, channels in the chat system. So for example, if I'm on clan, I can tap hi, and this will display a, ch a clan message. The local will display a local message. And the global will, of course, display a global message. There you go. Uh, additional things you can do with the chat system is you can change things like the fonts and other things. So let me press enter. You see the cogwheel here. Right click or on it or even I think left click should work as well. Yeah, left click works as well. And you have some chat set, uh, settings you can uh, handle. First of all, you can get a notification when a new message is added to the chat. You can uh, change the volume and the tone here. Have a little preview. And this is the little ding you will hear when people uh, add something to the chat. Of course, you, ten, you can turn this off if you wanted to. Other things, you can change the font for the chat window. You can add the global timestamp. You can uh, use tab to switch to the, the different channels, as I just did. You can make the chat auto-scroll. And this is then the part where you can have your uh, tab configurations. For, so, for example, on the global chat, I might want everything. On the clan chat, I might want uh, only the clan stuff, but also the whispers. Maybe also the global and the local stuff. And yet yeah, the local one, yeah, maybe add some other things as well. Close it. And now I should be able to see on the clan chat a little bit of everything. Let me show you. There you go. So let me type a local message. Oops. There you go. And you see the different channels flickering. So I will be seeing the message in the clan window and in the global window as well. So you can also clearly see which channel received the new message by uh, seeing the flickering of the channel. More things about the channel window. Uh, channel settings can be found in the admin panel, of course. Let me show you a few things about the 
chat system. Let's go to the Pippi settings. Here you can see the chat system. You can enable a profanity filter and filter out certain words if you wanted to. There is also a thing about server mes messages like uh, the message of the day setting. where You can add a message of the day as well. Uh, this one, for example, mm, enable MOTD. Yeah, I, I could enable that. I could disable that. I could add new messages. I could edit messages if I wanted to. All those things are available. Another thing which is quite interesting is uh, the rules you can uh, make pop up. So people have to uh, uh, agree to certain rules. A second system in the PP mod is actually the announcement system. So you have seen when I logged in, I got some messages and you can actually set those up yourself by going into the admin panel and you go to the PP settings and here on the top right, you will see that there is a section about the announcements. That's where you can set up a certain number of messages and make those appear at certain points of time. For example, I can add some messages which will appear on, uh, on uh, when the player logs in, when he logs off, show every 10 minutes cycle. Uh, I can, for example, set up a few messages and make the system pick one randomly. Uh, so the next announcement will be, we have a Discord channel, but I could set up other, other messages as well. So this is the whole announcement system, system and you can use that to periodically broadcast uh, some things to a certain place based on a set interval of time, for example, or when they log in or log out. Another system within the Pippi mod is actually the command system. Let me show you that. So here you can set up some commands, modify some commands, and also make sure that some people can use some commands and some people can't use commands. For example, the help commands is a normal rank command, but you could set it up so only VIPs can use that, moderators can use that, or even admins can use that. We will come back to that uh, once we have checked out the player system because that's where you can set up their ranks. So you can enable disable commands. The whole command system can be enabled or disabled. You can set up some commands uh, for uh, certain ranks and you could also set up some commands to be enabled or disabled uh, individually. I think at some point there will be a, a way to add and delete commands, but that seems to be disabled for now. So yeah. That's just the command system. I think the command system is actually the whole core of the whole thing. You can uh, do a lot of things with the commands. And of course, you will be able to enable or disable those commands depending on ranks of players or even enable or disable some commands individually. So let's have a look at another subsystem, another system within the PP mode, which is the map system. So when you press the M key, you will see that you get the map and there are a few new things up here. You see, there is a legend here where you have uh, some options to set. Let me have a drink. There you go. You can set some options here. And of course you can zoom into the map, zoom out of the map, whatever you want. You can show and hide uh, the crit. You can show and hide my position the position of admins, the position of guild members. You can show and hide admin markers, private markers, public markers, spawn points, work points, homes, beds, jails, sand, where the sandstorm is as well. And there is a lot more you can do with the map. For example, right clicking on a position on the map can be used to add some markers to the map. So for example, if I want to go here and I right click and I add a guild marker, a clan marker, for example, uh, beware unnamed city, for example. Okay, the marker has been added. Let's turn all markers on. There. The public marker can now be viewed, seen by other players as well. And yeah. That's a nice thing to do. You can add everything to the map as markers. So for example, if uh, if I wanted to have a spot here saying right click, add a personal marker based on Conan devolved, 
then this is a personal marker which won't be uh, seen by other players. Other people will not be able to see this, but everyone will be able to see this since, since this is a guild marker. Everyone in my clan will be able to see that. Of course, you can remove the marker, convert it into a personal marker, do all those things as well. Now, the other things you see here, those are what we call the warp points, the teleport points. You see, these are the normal ones you have in the game, the, the west, north, east and south, and the center spawn points, well, teleportation points. And the one you see here is called, oh, let me turn off some things. Let me turn off this. Here, you see Mortiville. This is one of the warp points I have added. So I added the warp point into the warp system, which we'll be having a look at later on. And you see that it clearly appears on the map as well. So the, all systems seem to be working together quite nicely here. Of course, just as with the traditional map, you can zoom in, you can pan around and have a look at all things. So uh, yeah, the nice thing about this is that you can, for example, here on our Patreon server, I will be setting up some work points in the future so people uh, who have a VIP level can teleport from one side of the map to the other. Uh, we can set that up again with the ranks, but I will be covering the, the work system in a minute. Okay, let's have a look at one of the core systems in the PP mode, which is actually the player configuration thingy. So in the admin panel, you will find the first tab, which is the players. Of course, I only see the players who are currently online. Uh, I could show uh, the offline players as well, but this is still a work in progress. So I, I don't really know who they are. They will show up with their number, but I don't know who they are. So there is nothing I can do about that for now. But if I have a look at my own player, I can clearly see my player name, Steam ID, my rank, and I have some additional information here on the screen as well. Of course, the user information, my player name, my Steam name, my Steam ID, my ping, and right here I can actually change the name of my character, which is uh, something you cannot do normally in, in Conan, so which is quite nice. Some additional character information, like for example my religion, race, gender, the guild or clan I belong to and my rank within that guild or clan. There is also a little area with a Pippi player configuration and that's where you can set up the rank. So I made myself an admin within Pippi, which means, yeah, I can set up some special rules for myself for all admins or uh, you can add a uh, role for moderators, a role for VIPs and a role for normal peoples. So I think on my server, I will be setting up some special things for uh, VIPs and admins and uh, probably two different things. For example, maybe add some more work points for the admins to use and uh, add some special things for VIPs, but we will be covering all that later on. There is also a little thing here which uh, shows me if I have accepted the rules or not, if I'm silenced or jailed or not, and where my home is. Now there is also a little uh, box here, well not a box, a little panel here which uh, shows you the current uh, currency I have. So I can give myself some more gold, some more silver, some more bronze in here. And these currencies can be used then to, uh, for example, to pay for kits, to pay for using work points and other things. There is a whole currency system into the game. And uh, yeah, I think you gain a certain amount of currency depending on some settings, which we'll be covering later on. But I can show you really quick where it is. It's in the Pippi settings. Right here, you see some uh, more information about the currency. So you can give a player's currency when they start the game. You can enable the payday and you can make sure that people gain, uh, for example, in my case, 10 bronze every time the pay payday is reached and even offline pay players get that. So that's... Uh, where you will find all those things. There is a lot of stuff here which is grayed out and I've heard that this is all stuff they are still working on, not taxman and other things. So we will be coming back to that later on. So let's get back to the player information screen and continue from here. There is also a whole area where you can uh, see the character statistics. For example, I can change my level in here. I won't be doing that because that seems to be resetting my knowledge and attribute points. I can give players experience from here. I can give uh, additional points to uh, strength, agil agility, vitality, accuracy, grit, encumbrance, and survival. I can also change my health, stamina, thirst, and hunger in here. For example, if I notice that I'm thirsty while recording, I can click the button to fill my thirst and click the button to fill my hunger bar, and I'm safe again for a while. Little information about more stats, attribute points spent, 
attribute points available, attribute points in total, knowledge points spent, knowledge points available, and knowledge, knowledge points total. There is also something here which I can use to uh, learn recipes. So yeah, if I want to teach myself some recipes, I can do that from here. For example, the glass bridge. There you go, I learned the glass bridge. Let me show you on my player screen. I level up, uh, learn recipes. Let's see, let's check one of the recipes I don't have yet. For example, I don't have, let's let's call it the wooden box. I don't have the wooden box yet. So I can go into the Pippi, Pippi admin panel, go to my personal recipes. Okay, there is a search thing here, so I can type in box. You see the wooden box, click it. Done. And I should have learned the wooden box now. Let me check on my information screen. Yes, I have learned the wooden box. Of course, you can also use that system to remove some, uh, some recipes from the things you have learned. For example, I have already learned the windmill. So let's go back into the Pippi thing. Oh, not this one, the admin panel, the Pippi, select myself, view recipes. And normally I should be able to see the windmill in here somewhere. It's somewhere. I could have searched, of course, windmill. There you go. Wind. Here it is, the windmill. Unlearn it. Done. Check again. And you see that I have unlearned the windmill. So you see, it's an easy way to uh, learn and unlearn recipes or grant people access to some recipes. Of course, for myself, I could have learned them from my inventory screen, but I, I can use this to uh, give people knowledge about some recipes as well. For example, there could be a Patreon online uh, who asks about something and uh, yeah, I, who helps me out and then I give him access to the, for example, the Greater Furnace uh, recipe and use the admin panel to make him learn that recipe so he can use it. So that's also something you can do up there. Let me check if there is some other stuff. Uh, yeah, there is also uh, the whole thing about punishment and interaction with players. So you can ban players, you can kick players, kill players, freeze players. And of course you have the teleportation things as well. I can send a player home. If a player has a certain home, then I can send him home. I can teleport myself to a player and I can summon the player to my own location. So yeah, that's uh, about it for the player system, the player information system. And there is probably still a lot I haven't covered yet, but we will all see that later on. Okay, before we wrap up today's episode, I will be checking out one more system within the Pippi mod, which is the Warp system. Let me show you that by opening the uh, Pippi admin panel, which you can do by pressing Shift Control C as well. For example, let's do it like that. And there is a panel here with all the work points. So the first five of them are the default ones, which have been uh, set up by uh, by the game itself. The south one north one center one east one and west one and the third one is actually the one i made here to, at, at my mortyville on on our patreon server and yeah that's actually one of the points you can teleport to so let me quickly navigate to some other spot on the map and i will be talking to you guys once i reach that so i can show you the warp system in action okay folks here i am back at uh, the location I was sh trying to show to you, this is actually near the southern uh, work point. It's near this little li lake and when we started I built a little crafting hall up here. That was going to be my main base but then I uh, went to discover uh, on an adventure to discover the rest of the map and I found the location where I built Mortyville and I kind of neglected this area since then. But yeah, let's uh, head up here and Check out that warp system. Let's go back to the admin panel. Shift Ctrl C would have done the same thing. Go to the warp area and now I can create a warp point in here. Uh, crafting hole. Let's give it a name. Crafting hole. Mortuaries. Old crafting 
hall. So this is actually a name and a little description for the word point. And there is some configuration I can do here. I can set it up as being enabled or disabled, hide or show it to the people. And then I have some cooldowns I can set up as well. Require charges. So for example, I can, uh, I can make sure that you can only use this five times or something like that. And that's the thing you can do up here. I can also make sure you need money, some currency in order to use this work point, which I won't be doing right now, but I could do it. I could do it. No, I could hide it as well. So this would uh, end up as being some, a little bit of a private, uh, a private work point, just uh, accessible for myself, I think. Of course, I can also set it up for some ranks. So, for example, everyone who has the normal rank can use it, but I will change it to VIP. Create. And it's done. The new work point has been added to the system. Let me venture a little bit more up there because I think one of our Patreons has his base up there. And I will be making a work point for him as well. Okay, folks, I'm back at Nico's base. Nico, who is one of the uh, the Patreons on our server. So he's up here in the mountain areas. I'm sorry about uh, the archers, by the way, but yeah, we will have to live with that. So let's add a work point up here for Nico. Go to the admin panel, warp, create a work point. Nico, Nico's base. I have a description, Nico's base. Enable it. I don't require any currency, but we do require VIP rank in order to use it. There we go, created. That's another work point added to the map. I could, of course, still change everything I needed uh, up here as well. Okay, let me have a look at the map now. This is the map. There should be a work point at Murtyville, which I can teleport to. Let's do that. Hup. Teleport to Murtyville, our main construction area on the map. And normally I should be able to go back, but let's see, let's see. M, map, hmm. Well, I have discovered something new. Let me show you why it doesn't work. Look, I added two more work points and they were not appearing on my map. And the main reason is because I added them to be work points for a certain rank of people. Look, this one is not linked to a rank. This one is linked to a rank, a VIP rank. But this means I will have to be VIP and only VIP, not the higher rank. So I have to enable the inheritable, which means VIP and higher will be able to use this, uh, this point, this uh, work point. Same thing here, VIP and higher inheritable. And that will make sure I can see them on the map. Let me show you. You see, there is one Nico's base. There is one my crafting hall. And now I can right click on it, teleport to work point, And I should be back at Nico's base. Uh, let it render in just a, a little bit. Give it a few minutes and I should be able to run around, move around and see things happening. You see, I'm back at Nico's base. So that will uh, diminish his uh, his travel times between my base. Well, the main uh, compound, the main uh, old medieval city of Mortville and his little outpost here. So what can you do with that? Well, you can set up some work points and make sure you can Travel to that destination fast, for example, you could set up a work point right here for the uh, spider cave, a work point somewhere in this area for uh, the uh, troll pirate ship. There is already a work point here, so you don't really have to do that. Maybe a quick portal to a uh, work point to the, uh, what's it called, the, the cave here, the dredges. Anyway, you can use those portals for just about anything and you have great control over who can use them and who can't use them, what is required for them, because as you have might have noticed, there is also some requirements attached to the whole warp points, for example. It needs money in order to get to this waypoint. It needs money or it needs some re recharges, some stuff like that. It's all possible. So yeah, the warp system is really amazing and uh, I think it will be something of great use to many admins, uh, many admins uh, on their own server. 
will be able to have that setup, for example, to go quickly to uh, something which is maybe a, a PvP arena somewhere on the map. Well, just add a warp point up there and people can teleport to that. People from a certain rank, people with certain rights, maybe people with a certain amount of currency and all those things will be at your disposal. Okay, folks, we covered quite a bit about the Pippi mode, but we haven't done everything yet. But I think I will be splitting that off into a second episode. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. And if you have comments or suggestions, feel free to post those in the comment section below the video. Check the description. That's where you'll find links to the mod on the Steam Workshop as well. And links to my social media pages, links to my Patreon page and the use your stuff as well. Feel free to also subscribe to the channel. Not only do you help me reach my next subscribe goal, but you will also get notified when I post new content to the channel. That being said, I will be wrapping up today's episode. So until next time, have fun and stay safe. Bye. <laughs>